Oh, well, uh, Zachary here. I'm dusting off the old girl. Hello, honey. How are you? <laughs> oh, dear. I'm keeping the uh, bloodline alive, my dear, if you understand what I'm saying, eh? Isn't she a cutie? <laughs> way back. She goes way back here. Oh, here's an old friend, too. Edgar Poe gave me this. Remember Edgar Poe, the guy who wrote the Get Up Here in the Light Here There, see? And uh, he's a little dusty, too, to tell the truth. <laughs> Whoa! Well, I'm Zachary, by the way, and this is my digs here in Manhattan in New York. And we're uh, entertaining the folks from uh, Bethel. Cortland Hall has a play. He hangs out up there. And he's a great old boy, and he's got the bloodline. Speaking of bloodlines, this is a grandpa pa 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 Hey, a little, something got a little dirt on there, my boy. Uh, anyway, his, his grandpa pa was uh, uh, Court, what is it, Cortland Hall? It was, uh, Henry Hall, the werewolf of London. So Cortland, who runs around in Connecticut there and up in that area, uh, he had a little museum there, I think, too. He, um, he's got that uh, werewolf stuff in his blood. <laughs> the best stuff in the world, you know, really, really great. I'm going to move on down here while I'm doing my cleaning. And then they, oh, here, here's something here. Here's my, I, when we have our head smashing contest, this is my, uh, what you call a rugby jacket. This is my number. And I get, usually get 18 guys knocked out, you know, is what we count. That's how we go to numbers on the shirts. 18 is a pretty high number. I've been at it for years. <laughs> Grand old picture here, my, my great old friend uh, Boris the Karloff. Grand old boy. He's the guy that got us all excited in the early 60s with old black and white movies on television. Barbara McCormick did this in pastel. That's me in pastel. Wait a minute, I'll strike the pose here. <laughs> Fantastic. And uh, beyond that, you see there, a real fine artist uh, doing the uh, Father Time thing, you know, with no flesh. <laughs> it's all gone, rotted away. The reason we're doing this here is to uh, let you know that up there in uh, Bethel, <laughs> they have that great thing, you know, with the pumpkins and all. And uh, Mr. Pumpkinhead himself is here in the background. And he's the guy that uh, organized the whole thing for years and years. And he sent me a copy of the tape, I guess it was from last year, of the 500, five, five, I'll use my crooked finger here, 500, uh, now you behave yourself here there, uh, that's arthritis. If you get old enough, you get something, and this is what I got. <laughs> Isn't that, it's amazing. It's, it's good for getting in your ears and all that stuff. Anyway, uh, very hard to push buttons on telephones, though and cell phones. Uh, what was I going to say here? Oh, uh, it's coming up and it'll be on uh, the weekend of Halloween, which is at the end of this month. We're already in it, you know. And uh, everybody gathers and uh, count the pumpkins and they cut the pumpkins and make faces on the pumpkins. Some of them very artistic, I must say, and with all those pumpkins. It's beautiful at night too, but they're all lit up. I don't know how you do that, but it's, uh, it's amazing. So all you people up there in Connecticut, I hope you gather. You know where it is, right? Bethel, Connecticut. It's up, up a little ways. And uh, it's the only place in all of Connecticut that puts on a show like this every year. And uh, all those people who put so much work into it and do all the carving, it's amazing, just amazing. Uh, so uh, I don't think he's selling that video, he just made it but uh, to show me and other people. But uh, you've got to go up there and see it yourself, that's the big thrill. And uh, the big time, of course, is at night when there's a cop out front to keep the traffic going. And uh, it's a great show, and I congratulate him for being so industrious as to put that thing on. Been known for years. How many years? 24 years. 24 years? Yeah. Are you ever going to grow up, my boy? <laughs> 24 <laughs> years, the pumpkin man. I asked him the other day on the telephone, what do you do with all those pumpkins, 500 pumpkins, after it's all over? He says, well, we put them in a truck, we take them out in a dump, and they desiccate. It's just like, you know, a, a funeral where they forget to bury people and they just rot away and go down into the earth and make very rich soil. So it's all recycled. I was driving through Hartford, Connecticut years ago. Uh, I used to go right on through it because I didn't think there was anything interesting there. But then a friend of mine was in that great big old fashioned hospital there for a while. So I stopped to see him. And one day I wandered through downtown and I passed a theater. And up on the theater was uh, the billboard for what was going to be there, Shakespeare, I think it was. And, uh, now, I've already forgotten this guy's name. Uh, Richard Thomas. He said, Richard Thomas in some kind of Shakespeare. I thought, wow. Well, this is me and Richard Thomas. Are you ready for this? Years ago, this little kid had an NBC show all his own. And uh, that's me and him out in front of this old empty house out there in Long Island. 
and we did a whole show about a show, a shoe show, a shoe show. <laughs> I left my shoes off so you can see the hole in my socks, but we'll show you that later. At any rate, this is a great picture, and the house was astonishing. It was empty and all the raggy windows. See all the curtains are all raggedy and all? It's too bad. I'm sure it's not there anymore. The, the rumor was that it was some uh, relative of uh, Jackie Onassis' family. This was done by a lady named Gretchen Sharpless, who, uh, get a good shot of that, do you? Is it too bright or what? It's perfect. Perfect. <laughs> How about that? You're perfect. <laughs> uh, we used to use that on the TV show there with, uh, we were doing all our experiments and so on. And that's where Billy the Michaels got excited. Incidentally, somebody told me last night, if I wander, it's because I'm getting older. Uh, last night told me that the Bobby Pickett called and he wants to come and sing Monster Mash with me. I'm always saying, that's not my song, it's his song. I don't want people to get confused. I did Dinner with Drac, if you're, if you're old enough to remember that. But uh, he did uh, Monster Mash. And he wants to come to the convention and sing it with me up on the stage. We have a grand party on uh, Saturday night there. The cameraman was sitting on the pedestal underneath the lens, and he was shooting. So he was shooting right up here, right upwards, as I was running underneath it, singing away, you know. And uh, it was an opera called Il Draculare. And uh, it was only performed once. Never been performed since. Now, that's unique in the history of opera. Uh, but uh, it's out there. <laughs> one, of the, one of the big problems I hear is, is, uh, is finding my way around is just, you know, finding daylight like, like, like right here. There we go, there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what are you going to do? The problem is, of course, my toenails and my fingernails are very sharp, extremely sharp. And that cuts through there, and I don't mind at all. I, in fact, I think it's kind of neat. I don't paint my toes, as you can see, and occasionally I, I sharpen them because sharp, you know, I can shave with these. I really can. This is, this is the picture that, is on, that was on the mon uh, famous monsters, right? Yeah. Yes. This, this is a yeah. copy of it. Yeah, <laughs> that's the artist did that, yeah. I don't know who that is. It looks like another Zap. I guess it's supposed to be me. I don't know. Yeah, like a mini Zap. Now, Once again, I'll use my crooked picture to point to the little thing here that the... Uh, that the uh, artist put on there. I think he thinks it, it looks like me sitting on the... This picture it was copied from the uh, cover of a famous monster magazine. Like, you know, young, kid, young children back in the, uh, in the uh, late 50s, early 60s weren't, weren't used to seeing horror movies on television right in their living room. It's like, uh, like you can't, you're not allowed to see dirty pictures now, but horror pictures were not being shown. So somebody got brave enough in Hollywood to uh, get together a whole bunch of the old black and whites and uh, sold them the rights to them to a different cities. And uh, I think New York, everybody, everybody picked, they picked up all over the country. It was a big deal. And uh, they put the movies on late at night so they wouldn't scare the children. My brother-in-law gave me a lot of old medical instruments that he got from the hospital because hospitals are always chucking things out because there's a new kind of a forceps, a new kind of this and that. And so we used them. And then we had to figure out what we we're going to do. The first thing we did was a big piece of liver. And we told everybody that was a heart. We we're going to do a heart transplant. And we drilled a hole in the top of the table and I put a dowel under there up to the liver. And I would work my foot and it would bounce up and down. And then, of course, occasionally the dowel would come right up through the, <laughs> through the liver. That didn't matter. You know, it was great. Then we, uh, we figured that brains, uh, cauliflower looked like brains. And then one, uh, and we smeared it up and make it look s s uh, slippery and all. And uh, I'd operate on the brain and take a bad part out and then eat it, you know. And we're, we're shooting a f little flick here at the moment. We're cutting, shooting, shooting a little thing for the uh, pumpkin festival up in uh, Bethel, Connecticut. Oh, that's all right. What the hell? Yeah. 